Thank you very much, Daniel. Uh, I would also like to thank uh, the organization board, uh, Professor Gulliver, André, Felipe, João, Tom. It's a great honor to be here and particularly to be speaking uh, with this so distinguished panel. I will speak here about two interesting cases uh, in the oil and, and gas field, uh, which attracted a great deal of interest from the arbitral community in Brazil by several reasons. First, because of the ramifications uh, of the cases between courts uh, and the arbitrations, and mostly because of the values involved. These two arbitrations are probably the two largest arbitrations in value in Brazil, and the aggregate amounts in dispute are probably in excess of $10 billion, which anywhere is a lot of money, but particularly in Brazil. Uh, to be able to understand uh, what we were talking about, I picked up some articles of the Brazilian arbitration law. Uh, the Article 1 uh, mentions that those who are capable of entering into contracts may make use of arbitration to resolve conflicts regarding freely transferable property rights. Uh, I prefer the translation negotiable and pecuniary uh, matters, but this is a translation from the CBAR, so I, I, I used it here. Paragraph 1, which was introduced uh, not uh, too long ago, in 2015, when the law was amended, is made for the arbitration involving state entities. And it says that direct and indirect public administration may use arbitration to resolve conflicts regarding transferable public property rights, uh, which is exactly the concept of negotiable and pecuniary matters. Uh, in the past, there was some discussion about uh, the subjective uh, possibility of uh, state entities entering into arbitration. Uh, now this is not an issue, and this is, has never been an issue in the oil field because there were contracts containing the clause. Uh, and after this act uh, became in force, uh, also the objective possibility uh, as is limited now to the discussion about the arbitrability of the conflicts considering the nature of the claims. As you can see from Article 2, Paragraph 3, uh, the arbitrations involving public administration are always by law and are subject to the principle of publicity. And that's why I'm talking here about these cases which are totally public in Brazil. The, First case I will be talking about is the Parque das Baleias oil field, which is the whale park. Um, by resolution 69 of 2014, the ANP, which is the regulatory agency for oil, gas, and biofuel in Brazil, uh, unified seven low production fields and created a single high production field. Uh, that had been put for, for bidding as a single block, but were considered independent. By doing this, there is a, a special participation that has to be paid, according to the legislation, by the concessionaires. High production fields must pay this special type of royalty, uh, and this is paid particularly to the states where the, the, the states of the federation where the oil is produced. And in this case, it's the state of Espírito Santo. Uh, as a result of this unification, of course, Petrobras, who would have to pay the royalties, uh, it would have to be pay, paying special participation now in excess of almost $100 million per quarter. That means almost $500 million a year in excess. So it filed an administrative complaint with the ANP seeking revocation of this resolution 69 of 2000, so 2014. Uh, the, uh, the complaint was rejected. This is the dispute resolution uh, clause under the agreement. As you can see, it's, it's, it's quite complicated and contradictory because 
you have the clause 29.2, which speaks of uh, bringing all conflicts to courts, and the 29.4, which mentions arbitration. Uh, as Klaus here mentioned before, uh, by not uh, drafting correctly an arbitration clause, you are bound to get into trouble. And that's probably what happened here. So, what happened? Um, Petrobras, not happy with that ANP's decision, uh, filed for a request for arbitration uh, before the ICC. Uh, simultaneously asked for an injunction, uh, which it obtained, and but later was reversed, uh, to suspend the quarterly payments. After the arbitral tribunal was formed, uh, it issued an order uh, to temporarily <laughs> prohibit the parties uh, from taking any acts that would, affear, uh, would, would interfere with the sphere of rights of the other parties. So this decision was against ANP's interest, who filed a lawsuit before the federal courts requesting a declaration that the dispute was inarbitrable, uh, a, dis a declaration that the arbitration agreement was inapplicable, and seeking to nullify the arbitration proceedings. Later, this uh, lawsuit was joined by the state of Espirito Santo, who was interested because of the royalties, the special participation they had to receive, and it joined this as an interested third party. The lower court rejected uh, the motion based on the principle of competence, competence. After this happened, the state of Espiritu Santo filed a motion for an injunction uh, to suspend the arbitration that was already underway until the appeals against that decision that uh, rejected the lawsuit by ANP because of the competence, competence principle uh, could be judged. The motion was granted and the arbitration was suspended in the second level of a jurisdiction. Uh, the tribunal uh, decided that on grounds that the decision, decision involves a dispute about oil field boundaries, which is a matter related to the agency's regulatory activity as part of its police power, and therefore a non-negotiable right not encompassed by the arbitration clause. So after this happened, Petrobras decided to file a conflict of jurisdiction before the Brazilian Superior Court of Justice. A uh, conflict of jurisdiction is an instrument that exists when there is a conflict between two courts, but today case law understands that you can also use a conflict of jurisdiction when there is a conflict between a decision from a court and an, an arbitral tribunal. The Superior Court of Justice, the first, first decision by Justice Napoleon Nunes Maia Filho, Filho understood, uh, denied the conflict of jurisdiction by saying that the matter under dispute did not involve negotiable and pecuniary matters and that the state of Espiritu Santo, which would be economically affected, had not signed the concession contract. This was not part of the arbitration agreement. There was subsequently a second vote by Justice Regina Eliana Costa, a dissenting opinion who became thereafter uh, the winning vote, uh, accepting the competence competence principle and also acknowledging that the problem that the state of Espiritu Santo was not a party of the agreement uh, should not jeopardize its right to uh, join the arbitration as an interested third party. Subsequently, there was a, also a vote from Justice Assuzete Magalhães, who, in my opinion, voted more correctly this issue, uh, because she understood that at that, mo at that moment that was there was no controversy between the judiciary and the arbitral tribunal, because in reality, the federal courts never decided, never addressed the issue of who had jurisdiction to judge the case. The, 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 the decision, the second decision of the second level, had merely suspended 
the arbitration until the appeals against the first level's decision would be judged. So this, this decision is uh, somewhat criticizable uh, because, first of all, it did not mention Article 485.7 of the Brazilian Civil Procedure Code, uh, which mentions that a judge shall not rule on the merits when the allegations of the existence of an arbitration agreement is accepted or when the arbitral tribunal acknowledges its jurisdiction. And in the merits, there was a failure also, in my opinion, because the court discussed the merits of the arbitrability issue, a matter which, as described, is subject to the arbitral tribunal's jurisdiction. The next case, this is the criticism. The next case is the Campo de Lula. Uh, please don't panic. Lula is not our former president who is now in jail. Lula is squid in Brazil. And this is why the Campo de Lula is called. So there was a bidding uh, in 2000. And after the bidding, uh, the uh, two field, the the, the, the field, uh, the, the, the fields uh, regarding uh, the, the, the bidding, they were divide, they were, uh, there was a, a pledge by the concessionaires to divide the fields in two. This would result in a significant reduction of oil production royalties and special participation payable to the state of Rio de Janeiro. The request, therefore, was denied by ANP. In light of that denial, uh, the concessionaires filed for arbitration in 2014 before the ICC based on the arbitration clause. The, I got lost here, I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, uh, in response, ANP filed a lawsuit before the federal courts to annul the arbitration proceedings under the arguments uh, that uh, these rights were uh, non-negotiable and non-pecuniary rights because it was a uh, regulatory decision regarding the boundaries of the oil fields. Again, uh, we have here a dispute resolution clause which was very badly drafted. As you can see, even, even, even more badly drafted than the first one, which was uh, before this, uh, the, this contract was uh, presented. So two issues had to be discussed, whether the arbitral tribunal alone could decide the competence competence and whether the matter discussed involved negotiable and pecuniary rights. In this case here, uh, the lower court decision denied uh, uh, the, the, uh, the motion, could, uh, it means denied the Petrobras position, granted ANB's, ANP's motion, and considered uh, that uh, the courts could decide and waiting for the arbitral tribunal would be, would be a, a waste of time. And this, these rights were not freely transferable rights because uh, this, the disputes were within the boundaries of an oil field and were part of the uh, ANP's function. Uh, function. The judgment on appeal uh, maintained that decision uh, by majority and understood that there was no need to wait for the decision from the arbitral tribunal and uh, that these rights uh, were not freely transferable rights. The proper t probability of dividing the block located in the concession area into two sections has nothing to do with the interpretation of the concession agreements clause, but rather with an insurgence by the defendant against the decision of the ANP that was made based on the latter's power to regulate the exploitation of oil in Brazil. So uh, this particular case, uh, the arbitral tribunal had not been formed yet. Uh, the, only the two co-arbitrators uh, had been appointed. The, the decision, uh, the arbitration is suspended to this date. There will be an appeal to be filed to the Superior Court of Justice, who had decided differently, as you have seen, uh, the, these issues on the whale case. And uh, we will have to wait to see the developments of both cases. The first one, where now the arbitral tribunal 
will have to decide. I'm concluding. And the, and the second case, and the second case where uh, we will have to wait for the decision of the Superior Court of Justice after the special appeal is processed. And uh, subsequently, depending on that decision, how the arbitral tribunal will decide. Uh, by the way, uh, the sole remaining arbitrator of that arbitration uh, is here with us. He's our future keynote speaker, José Emilio Nunes Pinto. Uh, the other co-arbitrator, which was a very important, very known Brazilian scholar, administrative professor, Diogo de Figueiredo uh, Moreira Neto, regretfully passed away this year. Um, so let's wait for the future developments of the case. Thank you very much.